the Great Tomb of Nazarek, the base of operations of the Clan Einzelgon, and a domain Lord Momonga built from the ground up with his comrades. We have seen throughout the series that Eins greatly values the tomb, as well as the time he spent with his guild members. So how exactly did the clan defend their home? Greetings everyone and welcome to the channel, as today we discuss Nazarek's defence policies. The ideology revolving around the defence of the tomb can largely be split into three sections. One covering the first six floors, the second covering floors six and onwards, and six having a slight overlap between the two, and the third ideology comes into play from the eighth floor onwards. Let's start by taking a look at the first policy, and to do this we shall take a look at the NPC Shoutir Bloodfallen. Shoutir is an extremely powerful vampire, and the protector of the first three floors of the tomb. Furthermore, she is one of the strongest NPCs in the whole of Nazarek and the strongest of the Floor Guardians. Eins even claims that Shouter is stronger than himself, although if he was to use his full gear and the staff of Eins will go this is up to great speculation. Where Shouter's kit really shines is in 1v1 PvP scenarios, and in the days of Yggdrasil she would often be paired up with Lord Eins himself to help take out lone intruders. Naturally, there is only one shouter though, so how come she guards three floors? This is because the first three floors are more about deterring small invasions than full-scale raids of the tomb. Shouter's kit means she is far better suited to dealing with smaller targets than in situations where she is greatly outnumbered. While not built specifically for multiple combatants, she is incredibly strong and has her house, vampire brides and of course her trump card, Einheria, which all allow her to deal with situations where she is slightly outnumbered. Einheria has access to the same weapons and armour as Shouter does and her stats are on par, making her equally as dangerous, especially as she also has access to the spirit lance which can heal her upon landing a hit. This forces intruders to focus on one of Einheria and Shoutir at a time and also to attack them together as this reduces the chance of Shoutir and Einheria getting time to heal. Furthermore, Shoutir has access to the spell gate. As this is considered conjuration magic and not teleportation magic, it cannot be blocked by anti-teleportation spells. This allows Shoutir to move up to the next floor and give her more time to prepare before she re-engages with the intruders of the tomb. Another thing Shoutir possesses that makes her perfect for defending three floors at a time is the resurrection item that she was given by Lord Pereroncino. As we are considering Yggdrasil Nazarek, we don't have to consider the potential that this item was lost during the fight with Ainz. All in all, Shouter's sheer combat prowess when dealing with small groups of enemies is more than enough to deter small-scale invasions of the tomb, but also leaves the floors empty enough that not too much is lost in the event of a large-scale attack, where Shouter will be unable to effectively defend the three floors. From this we can start to glean the first of Nazarek's defence policies, the policy to try and deal with small groups of invaders while expending the minimal number of resources. We see this through the fact that Shouter is an incredibly valuable and powerful asset, but equally in the event that she falls, only one floor guardian is lost. The payoff of this policy is that it gives the supreme beings an initial insight into the ability of any invaders. It also tells them the size of the attack they are dealing with and tells them if they need to start preparing for combat now or they can afford to wait a small amount of time to see how the further floor guardians deal with the threat. Going forward we will see the idea of using strong singular defenders is carried on, and we see this in floors 4 with Gargantua and floors 5 with Kokaitis. We'll start by looking at Gargantua, who exemplifies this perfectly. On paper, Gargantua is the strongest floor guardian, with Shoutir being referred to as the strongest floor guardian except for the strategic siege golem, which is Gargantua. The reason for this claim is that Gargantua has the highest stat pool across any of the floor guardians, as well as being absolutely colossal in size. Furthermore, what makes his loss less substantial than the other NPCs is that he isn't a custom NPC designed by the Supreme Beings, but rather part of the game system that the clan won. 
As a result, he doesn't mean anywhere near as much to the supreme beings as one of their own creations, and as such, if he fell in battle and they were unable to recover him, then the loss wouldn't be as damning. So why is Shao Tir deemed to be stronger and why is he on the fourth floor instead? The reason for this is simple and that he has no independent intelligence. He must be commanded and is unable to freely move. So although on paper Gargantua is stronger, Shao Tir has the ability to make snap decisions and judgement calls as well as not needing her orders to be so precisely defined. That said, he is more than enough to wipe out any remainders of small groups and his impressive health and defensive will drain the resources of any larger groups, making them an easier picking later. The idea of power proceeds onto floor 5. After moving on from the most powerful on paper guardian, we see the glass cannon in the form of the 5th floor guardian, Kokaitis. As the term suggests, Kokaitis' offensive power is incredible but his defence is slightly more lacklustre. This reinforces the idea of being great at taking out a group of smaller enemies but struggling against larger ones, as the larger forces could deal a lot of damage right off the bat and effectively render him useless. Also, by taking advantage of the number difference, they could easily overwhelm him, although Kokaitis does have access to four familiars. It is worth noting that Kokaitis holds a frost aura that can deal continuous damage to anyone in the 100 meter radius, and he has a skill called Akala's Sword, which can also deal AoE damage. These abilities are unlikely to be enough to turn the tides of battle in his favour. That said, he does also have an incredibly powerful ability called Frostburn Smite. This projects a close range ice attack that can freeze opponents and deal considerable damage. It can also potentially freeze opponents and thereby remove them from the fight, reducing the numbers that he has to contend with considerably. The downside is however that it is short range and therefore wouldn't be enough to deal with someone like a mage or anyone with long ranged attacks. Although Kokaitis isn't as exceptional at dealing with long range threats, Kokaitis is exceptional at short range. Kokaitis has four arms allowing him to wield multiple weapons, as well as the ability to expertly wield any of the 21 weapons he owns. According to Eins, Kokaitis has the highest attack power when using a weapon due to his range of abilities specialising in the use of weapons. This attack power has in the past even been strong enough to deal albedo damage. Given that Albedo has the highest defence in Nazarek and a slew of defensive capabilities, this is a lot more impressive than it at first sounds. In addition to all of this, Kokaitis also has each part of the Bright King combo. This is where the five Wisdom Kings of Buddhist culture are summoned and each form an attack. After all five are summoned, they would ensnare an opponent with a negative karma rating, allowing Kokaitis to deal a blow he considers most effective. This combo is also possessed by his creator, warrior Taki Makizuchi, albeit a more powerful version that can lower the karma of his opponent. While useful against single targets, it isn't as effective against large groups of opponents, especially considering it has a day-long cooldown. With all this, it's not hard to see why Kokaitis is referred to as a glass cannon. Except from the defences, which on paper don't look that unimpressive, so why is he considered a glass cannon? This is to do with his carapace skin, or exoskeleton. This exoskeleton is exceptionally useful, as it offers fire resistance and as it counts as part of him is restored with his own HP. Furthermore, he cannot lose it and it cannot be dropped upon his defeat. It even offers the ability that it cannot be bypassed by someone whose level is lower than his. The downside to this tool, however, is quite considerable. Its hardness and toughness as well as its stats are lower than the equipment of the same level when compared to legendary gear, and is significantly lower than divine level gear. Also, Kokaitis cannot switch between his exoskeleton and actual gear, meaning he's completely locked out of using divine level gear, and as such his defences are significantly lower than other floor guardians have the potential to be, and this is why he's referred to as a glass cannon. Kokaitis' focus on outright offence is perhaps a perfect summary of the first defence policy. While we start to see a change in tactics due to his area of effect abilities, he is ultimately one strong and valuable unit that can easily take down a small invasion force, but is far more susceptible to large scale attack. 
He is a single, strong unit with few familiars, and if he were to fall in battle, the blow wouldn't be as high to Nazarik as if Aura fell with all of the familiars that she relies on to be most effective in combat. The same analogy applies to Shouter and Gargantua as well. As the three together form the most powerful floor guardian, the highest stat stick, and the guardian with the most damaging single blow, all purely offensive traits. This leads us perfectly to the sixth floor of Nazarik, where we see a difference in tactics. We have already started to look at how Aura differs from the first three, but we also need to take a look at Mare as well. But as the video is starting to drag, we'll save this for another day. Thank you all for watching and I hope you enjoyed.